Hey, YouTube community, it's me, your favorite apostate, and I'm dude too. Here, returning with his furry co-host, the great and the terrible Apostate Cat, where we shall together be doing an interview of the Apostate Cat and see how he feels on such matters of uh, child molestation and other subjects. Yes. Yeah. What, what, what's that, Apostate Cat? You're tired? You're hungry? You want some tuna? Oh. Huh. The Apostate Cat has decided that he would like to have tuna instead of conduct an interview assaulting the Watchtower Babylon Crap Society. In lieu oh, of that, it, it seems that I am left with th this gentleman right <laughs> here named Howard. You may know him as Truth Warrior 1000. Yep. He is not That's the me. 1000th Truth Warrior, but he is the only Truth Warrior 1000. The only one. The only one. That reps. Indeed. About 9-11 truth and other things. Yeah, and I, I'm running out of beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Okay. I got lyrics for days. Anyway. So basically, what I'm trying to accomplish here is to show any witnesses who may stumble across this, really, that you're not a terrible person if you decide to apostatize. And there's more than just one reason for it. You don't necessarily have to, you know, want to get some boote just to apostatize. It's, it's not about that. And Howard here, Although the boote is nice. Right. Although it is nice, it is not the sole reason. And sometimes, not even the catalyst. Exactly. As it so happens, our friend Howard here, though a na terrible, nasty apostate that needs to be slain in filthy ways, he's never been disfellowshipped. No. Not... Not ever, not no, even once. Not even close. No, not even in the judicial committee. So why don't we why don't we kind of start this off by saying how long have you been one of Jehovah's Witnesses? I got introduced to uh, the Watchtower Babel and Crap Society. Uh, I think I was at around age uh, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. So, man, about 14 years. About 14, man. That's yeah, I'm getting old, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, so you got introduced to it when I was four. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. that's pretty. That's pretty yeah, interesting. Do, yeah. So, it's like, like I remember you back then. You didn't have the the goatee of goat-like goat apostasy. apostasy. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> and I also wasn't a priest at the time. No, you weren't. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But uh, so that being said, what spiritual position were you in when you finally? got the light turned on in your head. All right, well, I was a uh, ministerial servant, and uh, for the second time around, I actually, first time I was appointed ministerial servant, I was uh, uh, 18. And then I, I uh, was told I had to step aside for a little while, and then I was reappointed uh, when I was like in my early 20s, close to mid 20s. Okay. So I was a ministerial servant, I also pioneered for like a number of years. I know. A pioneer. Pioneer. So how many... I gotta ask. What was your average placement? My average placement? I went hard. It's so important. I went hard. Jesus went, wants you to get those yes, numbers yes, I gotta get those watch Get, those, get them up. Out. Get them up. Uh, man, I was so spiritual back then. I think I was placing like 40. Oh my goodness. 50 magazines. That's oh, like... And I brought like... Uh, that's like one and a half per day. Yeah, you I were brought ripping four a, people into the truth. Too. You were ripping a magazine in half and placing one and a half per day. Almost. Absolutely. That's amazing. It's amazing. You were already a budding apostate if yeah. you were doing that. Yeah. Defacing, <laughs> Defacing God's material. Ripping him in three pieces and, you know. Okay, so yeah. I guess I should also ask, and this we won't spend a whole bunch of time on, but do you regret bringing those people into the truth? Yeah. That yeah. that really uh, bothers me psychologically and emotionally. Because I feel like I... I kind of feel like the Apostle Paul, in a sense, when he um, persecuted Christians... And then when he became a Christian, he felt this, more than likely, this guilt probably, I okay. can imagine. So, I mean, why? What What would disturb you? You gave them religion, Howard. You gave them the truth. Why yeah. would you be disturbed about this? Well, you know, well, you know <laughs> when I came out of the organization, it was like liberation. I broke out of jail. Mental and, jail. Mental jail, spiritual jail, you know, uh, um, and to some respects, I could guess you could also say there's a physical dynamic to it. But, <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, uh, and so I just feel like I've imprisoned them, and I know deep down. Every I think every even current witness knows deep down that they're not as free as God really wants them to be. You so, see I me. Mean? So you think that the the average witness recognizes not even the the true form, but the outline 
of the cage, which is oh, why, yeah. on a subconscious level, they realize they're in a bad situation. Well, you know, actually that makes sense because if you think about it, the Watchtower will constantly tell you that even asking one question or viewing one apostate video will send you into a spiral of displeasing God and uh, being controlled by Satan. So they fear you actually recognizing the bounds that you're placed in. Exactly. So that, that would make sense. Um, that was dope. That was right. Okay, so when you are when when you were in the process, I, I should say, of recognizing this, what was the catalyst that made you say, oh, oh, okay. Here, here's the catalyst. Now look, at, <laughs> now, now, now look at this watchtower, the front of the watchtower study article, okay? Now, Where? This, just look at, the, let's look at the imagery here. Okay, as a whole. As a whole, okay. Now on the front of the imagery, once your camera quits doing the autofocus thing, which is really annoying, uh, I'm then, poor. Yeah, I am too. My camera's even worse. Anyway, you see this huge watchtower <laughs> on top of the Bible. And that, this right here, this one picture, this con con codifies exactly what moved me to leave. <laughs> yeah. Okay? That makes sense. That's exactly it. So, I just wanted this right here. And then and, they and wanted... This, wanted I, I, this could be optional. If I wanted to surmount the watchtower or not. I want it to be an optional thing, and I think that's what really moved me. The, the overall dominance and dictatorial spirit and, and culture. We are right, you are wrong, there's there. That pushed me out of it, yeah. Exactly. Okay. The show's now, for those of you who haven't uh, seen his videos, I will be providing a link in the description section of this video, but uh, one of the things that you mentioned in your videos that I thought was extremely powerful was when one of the elders approached you and you were talking about doing a watchtower fast. So why don't you share with our viewers about yeah, that? Yeah, I, I approached one of the brothers. I said, uh, you know, I want you guys to consider taking me off of the schedule just for about a month. Oh, well, what's the problem there, brother brother Howard? Well, well brother, brother... Uh, self-righteous. Self-righteous, yes, brother self-righteous. Uh, I just really want to focus on studying the Bible and I'm only going to... You know, I told him I was only going to give comments out of the Bible, and if I did do a part... What do you mean, give comments out of the Bible? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, don't just go me. But yeah, I, I only wanted to use the Bible solely, hmm. and so for 30 days, I wanted to fast. No watchtower literature. Watchtower fast. A watchtower fast. Not a Bible fast. Yeah. Very clear. Not a Bible fast. A watchtower fast. There's watchtower a difference. Fast. I want to trim some watchtower pounds, mm -hmm. reduce my watchtower calorie intake. And so you were probably morbidly obese at the time. Yes, man. Okay. I was just a porker, man. You're watchtower you're porker. Porker. <laughs> watchtower porker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I wanted to reduce my watchtower calorie intake and just get down to a real healthy biblical diet. Okay. And just for a month. I was like, let me try to try this out for a month. And basically they, they threatened me. They well, threatened to assassinate me spiritually. What was one of the things that... Uh, Brother Sopracats is trying to leave. But Apostacat's off eating tuna. Let, let us forget about him for okay. the time. Okay, okay yes. Uh, now, Brother Self-Righteous, when he was talking with you, you also mentioned that you were going to be using the Bible out in the ministry. Dum dum da, da, da. Ding, ling, ling. Exactly. Okay. And so it, what what was his retort to that when you're talking about your Bible studies? Even? Well yeah that that's the thing. That was really cool. Uh really crazy I should say. It was it was like a tw episode of Twilight Zone. Essentially he was saying your Bible studies cannot be counted as a Bible study if you weren't using the recommended Bible study aid, which at the time was what does the Bible really teach book? <laughs> it still is. Yeah. That's so absurd. So let me get just just to reiterate. Yeah, that you want point. me to say that again? Okay, you so you can't count a Bible study unless you're using <laughs> a, a non Bible, Bible publication. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> An extra biblical. And, and, and if you only want to use the Bible and nothing else, then it's not a Bible study. So that was the point that you went out and you left with the quickness, right? Well, no, no? Uh, not immediately. Not but, but at that point, I realized how I was in total deep doo doo. So, brother, self righteous really opened your eyes. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Okay. And it, it, just, it just dawned on me the the, the the lunacy of my circumstances. I really was in an alternate, upside down universe. At that point, the yeah. spell was broken, and you were yeah, on it was, your it, way was, it was basically over. So I had a public talk scheduled. I can't even remember where it was at. And uh, you didn't go. Yo, I just didn't. I didn't even show up. 
like, I was like, peace out. And they ain't seen your boy since. <laughs> well, actually, every once in a while, I'll make a, uh, I'll make a uh, yes. random. See, I was still on under apostate, uh, undercover apostate at the time, and he showed up and caused quite the stir <laughs> amongst the Kingdom Hall populace. Quite yeah, the stir, yeah. indeed. And, you know, of course, me being the person I am, and he's not disfellowshipped again, I just went up and I said, hey, Howard, how's yeah, it going? Yeah, exactly. And we, we had a conversation. Yeah, yeah. How's the weather? What's going on? And it was weird because the friends didn't know what to think. I came, I gave pretty good watchtower he gave, he, comments. He, I'm not going to, well, you didn't necessarily cite the watchtower, but they didn't disagree they were they were decent. Just, they i didn't sound nervous i don't think they well were. i mean you weren't i'm not i mean you weren't obviously pro watchtower but no, it, no. it definitely wasn't anti it was just a middle of the road bible general general, general yeah. you know jesus yeah. is good yeah it's neither pro nor against right, right, that that right. sort of thing and it left them all the friends going hmm? yeah they were stroking their goatees of good like apostasy hmm. i thought <laughs> He hasn't been going to the meetings. He's supposed to be dirty and doesn't. He's not supposed to know how to structure ideas or sentences, and <laughs> he still knows how to give comments. And yeah, how is this? He knows possible? how to still tie a tie. He has a suit on. You know. <gasps> oh, I, I thought you burned your yeah. suits when you yeah. were, when you left the watchtower. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. So they okay. don't want to think. So I, I, I just demolished all the stereotypes that the Watchtower Bible and Track Bible and Craft Society structures for people who decide to leave. Okay, and uh, I didn't. I didn't meet up to the, those false, uh, those, those those awesomely absurd stereotypes. So we're sort of reaching the tail end of our discussion here. Um, just to again clarify the point of this video, which is to illustrate that you don't have to be an awful person to be an apostate. You can lead a perfectly normal and scriptural life. Exactly. In fact, so in fact, one one, one minor thing I want to interject. I don't even quite consider myself. A per se apostate. I do it just to spite him. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's just you know tongue in cheek. It, it, that's why I introduced my videos that way because because you're not a evil apostate. No, There's well, nothing evil about you. Well, and I'm not anti Jesus. No. <laughs> By in any sense. Me and you both love Jesus, man. You know, and I'm we, down with well, Jesus, we, my boy. We have biblical discussions. And we try and focus on what the Bible is telling us and then how to apply it in our lives. Exactly. So, go, sort of going back to the original question, how has your life been, biblically and otherwise, since you have departed? I you're dead. Uh, yeah, I'm evil. I'm doing drugs and you're committing dead. crimes. I'm killing <laughs> people. He's a bandana <laughs> person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, only, the only thing different is um, occasionally I use profanity here and there, but as a whole, I live a morally clean life. No shit. No shit. <laughs> I live a, a, a morally clean life. Uh, I'm not going around, you know, having sex and doing all this and that. I'm just, uh, in fact, my relationship with God is stronger. That's one thing I've noticed. And so. Well, I've said it before in I'm my. I'm happier too. Yeah. You know, one thing I've said in my videos before, as far as my Bible reading is concerned, when I read the Bible now, it's a much more refreshing experience than it has been in times yeah. past because when I come across a scripture that doesn't agree with Watchtower propaganda, I, I don't try and override it with what they're saying. I meditate on the true meaning and then come to my own conclusions, which I don't think Jesus would be terribly upset with personally. But you know, through that, I've gotten closer with my creator than I ever was when I was spending 60 plus hours in the ministry mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> You know, trying to brainwash people. Exactly. And I, I do want to say this, too. For all the my brothers and sisters who are still in the Watchtower, I do view them as my brothers and sisters. I do as well. And it's, I know not, me, it, it's not the followers. It's, it's the leaders. It's the leaders, exactly. You know, the brothers and sisters aren't uh, producing the Watchtower. They're just supporting it. And they're great people. Wonderful, and, by and, and large. Them. We love them, yes. And a lot of who I am as a as a person morally and you as yourself mm. we learn from that environment so there are some things that we took away that were positive of, of, from the experience and I don't feel like it's not all negative yeah I don't feel demoralized or destroyed by it um, I just th I just look at it as a stepping stone mm. towards my spiritual evolution okay. and I and um, it's led to me to become a stronger more um, um, 
structured person right, than I ever have been before. But in short, you're, you're still an evil person. I'm evil. You're evil. And I you, kill you, people. You must be I, slain yes. in special ways. You must be dismembered, uh, spontaneously combusted. Yes, because I'm evil. Uh, squashed. I'm trying to uh, lead people you're, away you're, and destroy the spirit. Bo- you are trying to drag them down. <laughs> exactly. And God will kill you exactly. and he will enjoy it. Yes. <sighs> I'm Koron! Remember, life is a state, state of, of mind. mind.